Yeah, one of the things we saw just today, Ron, was we saw senior members of his administration doing interviews on the South Lawn. We saw his press secretary uh, doing the briefing and being asked basic questions about, for example, when is this money going to come through? How is this going to work? And unable to answer any of those questions. And it kind of follows what we saw, for example, in some of the interviews that the president has done recently with uh, Jonathan Swan, for example, that he has a bunch of charts that have information that really don't tell the story, right? And he seems confused even when he's challenged about that information that he's been handed. But I think what it tells us is, is there anyone, or at least begs the question, is there anyone around him, since someone is giving him this information, is there anyone around him who looks and sees and says, we can fix this. Here's how we're going to do it. Well, look, I think he obviously has Dr. Fauci available to him. He's the world's leading infectious disease expert. I wish the president would listen to him as opposed to having his White House staff do oppo dumps on Dr. Fauci. Uh, Dr. Fauci has been an advisor to six presidents and given them good advice. But as Senator McCaskill was just saying, instead, what, the, what is the president doing after having spent months putting the lives of senior citizens at risk? He signed an executive order that puts their livelihoods at risk by diverting hundreds of billions of dollars out of the trust fund that funds Social Security and Medicare, funds both those programs, with no plan to put it back in and no uh, consideration for how those programs will be funded when all these hundreds of billions of dollars are diverted out of them. Uh, what we know is Donald Trump's really trying to act the part of president, trying to do something to make it seem like he's being responsive. He's not fighting the virus. And he's not doing deals with Congress to get something done. You can't get something passed by Congress if you're standing in a sand trap in Bedminster. He needs to be working with the congressional leadership and getting some action to help people with the economic consequences of this virus, too. Well, to that point, uh, Jonathan, just a couple of hours ago, I was talking to Garrett Hake, who was saying in his conversations on the Hill, there has been no contact between the Democrats and the White House. Is there even any indication that anybody uh, in the building behind you is feeling the pressure to get back to bargaining, that they're going to be able to sit down and somehow hammer something out? Well, the White House is certainly signaling that they're open to negotiations, that they would like talks to resume. Now, having said that, the president tweeted today, uh, reiterating a claim he made last night on the tarmac in Morristown, New Jersey. The Democrats have already reached out to him and said they want to have these negotiations. But calls to Senator uh, Minority Leader Schumer's office and House Speaker Pelosi's office reveal that they certainly didn't. So it's not quite clear which Democrats may have reached out. And when we asked the press secretary at her briefing a few hours ago, she said she wouldn't get into the president's call log. So therefore, we're not sure which, if any, Democrats have reached out. But this may be simply a way of the president trying to say, we want to talk. Look, his own, his own advisors and aides, though they're obviously talking up these executive actions, believing they will help, they recognize that they will fall short of what is really needed here, that it's a congressional package would be significantly bigger uh, and more vital to the Americans who are suffering right now economically uh, because of, of the pandemic. So they're urging talks to recover and resume, but there's no action on Capitol Hill at all today. Uh, no, no public events, no press events. Uh, so that is still something that will be off in the distance. We know the president uh, is gonna be briefing again today. And they just announced at 5.30. Uh, you can rest assured this will be a question that we put to him. Yeah, many questions, I'm sure. But by and by, Claire McCaskill, where are your former Republican colleagues who every time Barack Obama signed an executive order raised holy hell? And again, we said Ben Sass, he did put out a statement. He did say that this is unconstitutional slop, but otherwise it's been largely crickets. Yeah, it, this is um, really, this is a moment in history that will be called out for the hypocrisy of the Republicans in the United States Senate. Uh, you know, the tops of their heads would have blown off if uh, Barack Obama said he could cut payroll taxes with an executive order. Uh, they would be, you know, tearing down the White House if Barack Obama said, yeah, I can waive student loan payments. I can do all of these things. I can take money out of the Social Security Trust Fund. Uh, this is not the way this is supposed to work in our Constitution. When Congress can't agree, the president doesn't get to decide he's not a king. And Donald Trump doesn't get that part. 
He thinks he is a king. He wants to be a king. So uh, Ben Sass uh, role modeled what the rest of the Republicans should be doing. The way to stop this president right now, the way to get a deal is to call out his phony executive orders and memorandums and get back to making a deal to help state and local governments, help families directly, and actually help people get over this pandemic by the things that Ron talked about money for testing and tracing and making sure testing works and doing masks and shutdowns in a way that will stop this pandemic. That's what our economy really needs. Before we go, Jonathan, the days are gone when uh, all of us were taking up every seat in the briefing room. Any chance you're, uh, you're up this, this day? Are, are you in the briefing room or it's not your, not your number? The AP is always in the briefing room, and it's, it's my turn in the chair today. So uh, second row, slightly off center. Yeah, OK. Uh, <laughs> I'll be there. And certainly the press corps has a lot of questions to ask about the executive orders, uh, but also the intelligence from over the weekend uh, that suggested that, once again, uh, Russia is trying to hurt the president's Democratic opponent uh, in the election, even as perhaps China and Iran are expressing their preference uh, for the president to lose. So lots to discuss. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.